Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Ranch, where we investigate how AI is affecting the businesses all around the world. And my name is Eval Trutans, and I'm also a founder and entrepreneur and researcher in this field. And today with me is a very important person around here in the Baltics, so Dimitri Nikitins. He is the chief technology officer on the board member of TET, which is the largest telecom company in Latvia and arguably in Baltic. So they have over 300 million revenues a year. They also are providing many, many services like TV, uh, telecoms, of course, securities, cloud uh, services, and many, many others. And Dimitris has over 15 years experience in this field, a lot of knowledge to share in research, development, uh, leadership. So great to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Let's start by giving a little bit of background and how did you end up to this position and uh, what's your life story through the technologies lens? Well, uh, it was uh, quite a long journey uh, up the hill. So uh, basically, I've started my journey uh, within a TED company as uh, an engineer mm. uh, within the second uh, line uh, help desk. So um, step by step, uh, I've uh, climbed a bit higher. So I've uh, led uh, uh, customer support uh, within that. Then uh, I was uh, network operations director, switched mm -hmm. to, to the IT. So basically, I've managed to grasp uh, all the aspects of, of the technology business within that. And uh, a couple of years ago, I became the, the CTO of the company. Mm -hmm. So it seems that your journey is mainly attached to TET, right? So this is the, the more significant part and you've been pro working on different areas and products, right? And uh, maybe um, what, what, are, what have been the uh, most proud of uh, achievements so far? What, what do you have seen that, that, that has been implemented in, in your uh, leadership so far and uh, also where you have worked in the TET? <coughs> Well, the the thing uh, I think which I'm most proud of is uh, the digital transformation, uh, which uh, we we've been having for the last four years. So uh, basically, that was the huge uh, project. Uh, I guess uh, one of the kind in in, in Latvia for for sure. Uh, the amount of the changes which we've made to the technology stack to the organization uh, organizational structure and culture was enormous so basically we started uh, from changing the the culture and structure of the company so we've completely changed the IT department uh, uh, to to be able to adjust to, to the new things uh, to come and afterwards we we started to change all our almost all our critical systems uh, uh, that went together with the process change. And uh, for four years, the huge team of uh, at least uh, 250 employees was working on, on that project. Uh, around uh, 500 uh, people uh, in total were, were touched by the project. So uh, basically, uh, the, the project impacted their uh, everyday work. So. Uh, that's that's the thing uh, I guess the company is uh, proud of, and uh, I'm in particular uh, very proud of. It's like a real, uh, like a long-term st strategic move that was taking place over four years, and I assume still are taking place, right? So uh, digital transformation never ends. So mm -hmm. uh, we've managed to to make the the first run. Uh, the first sprint, uh, but uh, we finished one, uh, one. Uh, we reached one mi milestone. Now we are looking what are the other areas which we can transform, which we having uh, problems with. Which uh, what is the, our long term vision? How we see us in a, in a ten years period, and uh, we are going forward with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the the telecom business and especially yours, where you also have different other product uh, lines. So, what what are actually those uh, critical processes that that that, that you um, that you worked on so far, and what what are the critical processes that that you are managing, and how how the how how this telecom company is actually operating? What are the main uh, things that that I assume customer care? That's one. The what other things you have. 
So uh, we are not actually the typical telecom company. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a variety of services which are not offered by other telecom companies like uh, for example, electricity, electricity. Uh, other uh, telecom companies in Europe are not uh, doing that and not going to in that uh, business area. Uh, one uh, distinguished factor is that uh, we have quite a uh, huge uh, uh, consumer electronics business. Mm. Usually telecom companies sell uh, phones, mobile phones, and uh, maybe some uh, TV sets. We, we have quite a uh, huge range of the products there. We have a fully automated eShop uh, and uh, we can add uh, all kinds of products and, uh, and uh, see what, uh, what our customers require. Uh, regarding the processes, so uh, the, the specifics uh, within the telecom industry comes from our backend. We ha have quite a huge network uh, around uh, the Latvia and uh, with some uh, access node uh, or how it's called points of presence around the Baltic Sea and uh, that's 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 brings the complexity to the business other way around so the customer service is uh, almost the same as in uh, in other companies but uh, everything which is connected with the network and mm -hmm. uh, TV uh, services uh, that's uh, the telecom know-how and uh, that brings uh, additional complexity and uh, mm -hmm. distinguish us from other companies very broad uh, corporation so and then uh, currently um, is the telecom arm of of the business like uh, providing the I assume the internet connection right and uh, what else is is that is that the domain still or or it's like percentage wise uh, what what do you see right now what what, what is the actual market uh, for, for for your services. Well, it's, uh, it's still our main business, but mm -hmm. uh, we are the diversifying uh, our business areas and uh, growing other business lines as well. So uh, basically we uh, went into the software development or uh, we are providing uh, some TV as a service uh, offering uh, like uh, TV platforms, encoding solutions and so on. Uh, we are uh, in uh, in advertising business uh, with our own TV channels. Uh, uh, so we look at a uh, broader picture and uh, we think how we can grow in a, in the future and how we would like uh, to see for our customers to see us and how we can offer them the more complex uh, service. So basically one-stop shop, that's that's our vision. <laughs> like like uh, Amazon, every, everything shop, but in your case, you'd like everything business, <laughs> like electricity, uh, like more like on service side. Yeah, so Amazon is uh, is the brick and mortar yeah. basically, but we are looking at the services. So everything uh, which is connected with the technology and you might require, you can get from us. Whether it's uh, uh, broadband connection, TV services, uh, cybersecurity services, mm. uh, we we want to be there for you. We want to open the technology world and bring innovations into Latvia and offer to our our customers mm -hmm. okay okay uh, just uh, regarding the business side maybe some of the last questions the uh, how, how how much of the business is the b2b and b2c right now is it about the 50 50 or what do you know uh, b2c i guess is a bit bigger but uh, mm -hmm. we we are very strong in the b2b market as well so uh, our market shares are, are quite uh, quite good there mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned the word digital transformation. I think many people uh, interpret it in different ways, how you define it. And uh, well, maybe you can give an actual example of whether you had some or pro method or way how you did it before and how you do it now. I, uh, how would I define uh, the digital transformation that is uh, the process and cultural change within the company using the uh, new technology opportunities. So basically that's not uh, the, the technology project, that's not an IT project, that's the change of the whole company. And uh, that was the, the, uh, our goal. We want to change ourselves uh, because uh, we had some uh, processes which were developed uh, in, in time like uh, for five, ten years before the transformation and uh, the they were a bit outdated at the time. 
but uh, they were incorporated in our IT systems and uh, we had like locking. We had to do a lot of change to, to change the processes as well. So uh, what do we decided for ourselves, we will start uh, from, uh, from the scratch. We will draw completely new processes, how we uh, want to work, what's the most efficient way to mm -hmm. work, uh, how we see how our culture will, will look like. And afterwards, we, uh, we added the technology on top. So basically, mm -hmm. we uh, have chosen uh, quite a good stack of the IT products, which will support our visions for the year uh, to come. And, uh, and uh, the, well, basically, that was the cooperation of the business and IT to, to mm -hmm. implement the new vision uh, in, in, in life. Mm -hmm. well, so the it seems like uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So this is the cultural shift, the strategic shift, and also not you not particularly taking existing processes and uh, trying to make them better, but actually redefining the whole processes, making taking several processes, making new ones, right? And uh, some maybe you have an actual example of some of the situations where before it was done different way, and now it's more much more efficient. Or better? Well, I guess the best example uh, how uh, the the process in uh, in our thinking changed during the digital transformation uh, was uh, with the TV package uh, change uh, process. So um, after we went through the, the existing uh, TV package change, we had a problem because. Uh, uh, we had a process uh, and requirements for, for the IT features uh, written on uh, three uh, pages. And there were different, uh, different requirements, like if uh, customers were, want to change uh, till the fi uh, 15th date of the month, then uh, it, uh, we have to do this. If after that, then we have to do this. If the customer has this service bundled with the, the TV, then uh, something like that. Uh, afterwards, uh, so we, uh, we pulled the plug and uh, said, hey, we are not going to implement that. That's too complex. Uh, our uh, employees don't understand that. Our customers don't understand that. Please re rework that uh, completely. Uh, so uh, end result was like uh, requirements in two sentences. If customer wants to, to change the products and uh, until the 20s of uh, current months, uh, then uh, we, we change it right away. If not, then uh, in the next month, that's it. Wow. So it's, it's actually became simpler. So do you see that uh, this kind of redefining of the processes usually become makes the, uh, the operation simpler or is it just the, that one case? That's, that's the goal, because uh, if your operation is uh, too complex, uh, it becomes too complex for your employees uh, to handle it in day-to-day uh, -day activities. If it's too complex for your employees, then it's uh, way too complex mm -hmm. for, for the customers. Mm -hmm. And we want to be open uh, and uh, understandable for our customers. How how do you find which processes need to be changed? How do you, how do you measure or or um, choose uh, where the digital transformation and this process that you started should uh, um, uh, be applied? So uh, basically, we went uh, through all the processes. Uh, we've chosen the area that we want to transform the B two Z B two C business. And uh, we went uh, through all the processes. Uh, we had uh, all our processes mapped before. There are some methodologies how telecom mm -hmm. uh, companies are mapping the processes, how they are organizing it. So uh, basically, we went uh, from uh, from uh, process one till till that. Mm -hmm. And in in all of this process, so you say it's last four years, and we know that the AI has you know exploded in use cases last 10 years so did you did you see in, uh, already some applications uh, where, where, where it helped so far or is it something that that uh, that that is more for the next uh, next stage uh, during the transformation, so uh, we've used some uh, predictive AI features mm -hmm. so uh, we we have quite uh, 
a number of use cases implemented uh, in uh, uh, network monitoring uh, in uh, some recommendations uh, for the customers. So uh, we, we try to come up with uh, content recommendations for the customers on our TV platforms and so on. Uh, but uh, for the last two years, that's a huge leap, which yep. was made by generative AI. And uh, now we are adding features uh, to, to our IT stack as well. And we see that, uh, uh, well, in a couple of years time, that the, the way how uh, we operate, how our, uh, how our front office employee work uh, will, uh, will change qu uh, quite tremendously. Mm -hmm. You already uh, have the plan how to do the next stage with, with these uh, transformations or, or is it something that's shaping right now? <laughs> Uh, we are working on our uh, new AI strategy. We have uh, near-term goals right now, uh, but uh, what uh, we want to see how it will look like uh, in a three-year period. So uh, mm -hmm. we are uh, digging a bit deeper, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully in a, in a couple of weeks we will finalize the process and, mm -hmm. uh, and see uh, what uh, what things should should be done and uh, whether we have to make an uh, adjustment to, to mm -hmm. our uh, existing route um so so far you mentioned these uh, recommendation systems uh, where ai is of course useful probably the churn prediction uh, predictive analytics all of those things have been done for years so and now you mentioned that generative ai is also being introduced so the um yeah so maybe you can talk on um how you are pushing the limits of this where do you see some ai applications that are emerging now and uh, what are some misunderstandings of people just trying to apply AI whatever they, they see maybe it's some place where you don't actually need AI and, and they just because of the hype try to try to apply it or that's that's not your way how, how do you see it that's uh, that's not exactly our way yeah. uh, how we would like to move forward i know that uh, there are companies that uh, were running ahead and uh, teaching everyone how to use chat gpt after the release and uh, there there was a lot of hype on that uh, we introduced the the features of the ai to our employees but uh, what uh, we are doing right now we are understanding the use cases so uh, we do not want to push the gener uh, general ai capabilities to everyone and uh, say uh, just use it whatever how use it mm -hmm. uh, we are going the, the sphere by sphere and uh, we are understanding uh, what are the use cases where we see that, uh, the, for example, the co-pilots are increasing the productivity of our developers. Uh, well, uh, depend, depends on the, the use cases, but from uh, 10 to 30%. Uh, I've, uh, I've talked with our uh, one of our security guys uh, lately, and he said, hey, uh, after Gen AI uh, tools came into my life, uh, I've increased my productivity up to 40%. Uh, and uh, that's that what we would like to achieve. We want to give the right tools to the right people and get the maximum uh, out of the, uh, the generative AI possibilities which are which are coming. Uh, and for sure, we have uh, uh, plans how we uh, will transform our uh, front office uh, employee uh, everyday life. So basically, we are working to to on uh, creation of the extensive uh, virtual agent which will help them in uh, everyday life so uh, the the first steps are there but uh, the plants are much bigger uh, because we want to integrate with our internal systems as well mm -hmm. so uh, we are working on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay uh, and uh, how do you ensure that uh, you know there is this uh, security data privacy with these AI technologies, especially, you know, generative AI, where you send uh, maybe sometimes sensitive information. Um, also, before you mentioned the customer behavior data, um, do you have any problems with this or, or is, it, is it something that, that you're paying much attention how this works? Uh, well, we are uh, in uh, Europe. 
and uh, there are a lot of uh, regulations uh, regarding the data privacy, how you can use the data, where you can use the data, and uh, uh, the compliance is a uh, number one priority for us. So uh, basically, we are using uh, the data only when uh, when uh, it's uh, necessary and uh, only when we have the the consent for from the customers uh, or employees. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are following on that very strictly. Uh, now uh, we see that uh, there is a new AI act introduced uh, this week, and uh, well, uh, majority of our use cases uh, will uh, will fall uh, under uh, high risk uh, applications. So uh, we will follow on that, and uh, we we know that we knew that the AI act is coming. We knew that what will be under. In, written in the, in the AI Act and uh, as I said we are working on our, on our uh, strategy right now and uh, the compliance will be the base of the whole strategy uh, it, it will be the base of our uh, AI house so mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the thing uh, which we are following on uh, of course uh, if you're looking on the examples uh, in the world uh, yesterday i read uh, quite a funny joke uh, so there are three simple rules in, in life so uh, never ask a woman what's her age mm -hmm. never uh, ask the man uh, what's his salary and uh, never ask a, a company where are they getting mm -hmm. the training data so uh in uh, in, in the world uh, the, that's that's the different situation uh, and we know that uh, in the us the the rules are not so not so strict as in europe some states are uh, uh, following the, the data protection and uh, governing it uh, but some not so uh, it's a bit uh, a bit more free freely mm -hmm. situation for them yeah yeah the, the, we also have followed with this ai act uh, in european union so there is these um, categories right there is the uh, prohibited use of ai which is also uh, there's discutable because there there's the you know you cannot use biometric uh, tracking the social credit systems things like that uh, and, and uh, at the same time the governments sometimes can use them use it in the as the, some exem exemptions but then there is this high risk low like medium risk and so on but still it means that the, even if you build any system that would classify as high risk in, instead instead because it uses some you know measurements of your employees or anything like that uh, it is still possible to build those products. It's just that you need to produce a lot of documentation and prove that uh, your intents are to use this technology in the right way, correct? <laughs> yep. So you have to follow up on uh, all the application, keep all the logs, uh, um, to follow through on a uh, risk-based approach. Uh, in our case, uh, that's not even connected to is uh, with the use of uh, the customer data and so uh, we are uh, the telecommunication company and uh, uh, that's that's the specific rule that uh, almost all uh, applications of the AI in uh, telecommunication companies or uh, within the critical infrastructure will fall under high risk mm -hmm. uh, applications well they need to be more transparent on training data on validation and things like that yeah, but still, it's just just maybe for the viewers to understand that this this AI Act um, gives a little bit of rules and and uh, some guidelines, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that many products are not allowed anymore. It's just need that it must be uh, compliant with all of those regulations. So that that's that. Um, okay. Uh, so the outside of the telecom companies. As an expert, do, what do you see? What are other great applications of AI where the businesses can benefit of it? Well, uh, I would say that uh, we are in the early stages mm -hmm. at the moment, and uh, some uh, pilots which are being conducted in uh, uh, in the world are pretty promising. So. Uh, we know that uh, there are companies which are uh, working on the lifelike uh, robots, mm -hmm. uh, which were uh, working on basically on mechanics before that. But after the AI uh, breakthrough, uh, well, the, the first demo of uh, those machines is pretty impressive. 
-hmm. So uh, if we add uh, more hardware to that, then uh, the situation might become really interesting because, uh, for example, uh, NVIDIA uh, just presented their uh, new chips uh, chipsets and uh, the amount of the things which you can do with that is is very impressive and uh, that might be the next step within the technology technological the development uh so yeah let's see how it goes so basically mm -hmm. the the hardware for for the ai and the software uh, should go uh, hand in hand to, to get the, the break, next step breakthrough. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, I would say that uh, these are the, the early stages and uh, they are much more exciting than we, we've seen uh, before in our history. And uh, what's to, next to come will be, um, I guess, very, very uh, challenging for, for the humanity and very exciting in the same time. So <clears throat> regarding the example that you gave about uh, the intelligent robots, so I think one of the great examples is uh, Figure, uh, figure Bot, uh, that, that they publish these uh, examples, uh, how they use it. So it's, uh, it's uh, almost like the demos that Google did with Google uh, Gemini, but actually working. Because if you read uh, carefully in Google Gemini documentation, you saw that they actually did a lot of manipulations. The, they, they, they didn't do it as in video where they, you know, uh, play a game and uh, draw things and things. But it was done uh, step by step. And in this case, the, the figure guys, they're building this uh, awesome robot where it uh, perceives the visual for, uh, perceives the also what people are telling it and then tries to interact with the world and um, this is something uh, coming but uh, don't you don't you think it will take many many years or to actually be practical uh, let's see how it goes because uh, two years ago we couldn't imagine that the AI might, <laughs> might have such application and work <laughs> like that uh, before that, we had uh, we we've seen a, a lot of uh, great companies which are uh, uh, working on, on physics, on the movements, and mm -hmm. uh, but uh, basically, if we uh, we look inside, there there was no one home. So mm -hmm. those those were only machines. Now we we have the possibility to to add some intelligence, uh, intelligence yeah. uh, inside and uh, combining that with uh, some. Uh, Test and failure approach. Uh, there, there might be some interesting solutions up ahead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, this is not something you're planning to do uh, in the like foreseeable future in that, right? <laughs> uh, not yet. So uh, we we see that uh, well, basically the major concern about AI that uh, hey, AI will take our jobs. And uh, we see that uh, some of the professions uh, might be uh, required a bit less, uh, but uh, in the same time, we will need people uh, who will uh, train the, the AI algorithms, uh, the work in administration and so on. Uh, you can't completely get rid of uh, people uh, in, uh, in the service industry, for example, because, uh, well, AI doesn't have uh, emotions, AI doesn't have empathy. You can uh, try to address the, the most simplest uh, problems with the AI, uh, but afterwards, uh, if it doesn't work, you have to reroute the uh, customer uh, to the real agent who can uh, empathize with the customer, understand what's the, what's the problem, and uh, find uh, the best suitable solution. Yeah, the, uh, I think the, the uh, rise of these technologies also bring us closer to a human interaction in person and in, in uh, not and uh, not as digitalized as as we thought it will be because uh, you can just argue quite easily that you know in a few years how you will actually for example prove something with digital materials in courts for example like if you have videos uh, depending on the quality you know like Probably they don't have super high. Everybody don't have super high qual quality video devices to, to to you know. Then you can try to analyze if this is generated or not. Basically, depending on quality, it's quite impossible almost in many cases to distinguish anymore between generated content and not generated. So and then you know how you can trust the video calls, how you can trust the audio calls. So it comes 
comes again at some point back to the human contact, don't you think? Uh, yes, <laughs> actually, that uh, that brings a lot of uh, risk uh, for for the communication between people because. Uh, Last week, I saw a couple of videos uh, where uh, I don't know whether it's true or mm -hmm. not because it's uh, kind kind of hard to distinguish right now. Uh, where uh, AI is uh, trying to to mimic uh, the way people talk mm -hmm. with all the pauses and so on. Sure. And uh, if we add uh, some image generation on top. Mm -hmm. That that will be the huge problem for for the security uh, of uh, financial security of people, security of the governments. We know that uh, there were already the cases where our politicians spoke to, to the generated uh, images and so on. So uh, and we have to think about that how we can counter that. And uh, that's uh, one of uh, areas of, of AI application which we are looking at. So basically, AI brings a lot of uh, good things in our life, but uh, not uh, not people. Uh, all people are good. Mm -hmm. There are some malicious actors uh, which uh, intend to exploit uh, mm -hmm. all the technological pro progress and. Uh, uh, for example, cyber criminals are not sleeping. They are using the same AI technologies sure. to, to get access to, to, to the places where sh they shouldn't have access. And uh, that uh, creates additional challenge for the counterpart, how we can defend ourselves, uh, what AI tools uh, we should use to, to safeguard us uh, from the cyber point of view. Uh, for example, we are at the moment uh, testing the, the quantum uh, key distribution systems, uh, which are meant to, to uh, crypt the, the communication between two points and uh, not to allow tackle with that uh, mm -hmm. on, on the go. So uh, we will have to come up with a new solutions sure. uh, to address those problems. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, what, I, what I see is that First of all, the, the technological solutions, they're only very short term. Like as soon as you develop some system to detect anything, there will the other players are not they will be active as well. And they are also not playing by the rules. So regulations also will not help because you know you can put all sorts of rules, but it doesn't matter. So and then at the end, do you do you envision that communications between people will they be you know, based on some kind of biometric identification that I can be sure that this message is not generated or this call is not generated or or will it be monetary? You know, you need to pay a certain amount of money so that attackers, this is additional cost to, to automate some kind of communication which is not genuine. How, how do you see we can solve this actually? That's actually a good question and uh, it will be... Uh quite huge problems uh, problem to address in the years to come because uh, if we are talking about uh, biometric identification then uh, it should be uh, propagated all around the world it should be unified solution and so on so basically then it's uh, it's the unified database where you store mm -hmm. all the biometric uh, identification which on the other hand, possess additional risk. Yeah, sure. if, so, if someone gains access, then uh, it's for, for game over for sure because you can't uh, change your biometrics. Mm -hmm. um, well, there should be uh, the combination of, uh, of uh, bulletproof uh, mechanisms, how, how we can prove that uh, uh, we are accessing uh, the system. There should be multi-factor authentications and uh, we, have, we will have to standardize and unify our approach to to, to the security uh, within the world if we want to be sure that uh, the guy we are talking uh, with uh, from San Francisco mm -hmm. is is the real guy and not mm -hmm. some AI generated image. Yeah, or, or some scammer using AI technology as well. So the, the, the safest way is, is like we are talking like in, in, in person, right? Uh, it's quite, quite uh, hard to then uh, do, do these things. Um, yeah, so, so the um, yeah, so just just bringing to to the to the uh, some of the final points. So the in this very changing world, 
where you also see that that in your company digital transformation makes a lot of things happen faster more efficient better so the uh, what kind of skills are you looking for the people in the future you know what, what are you now employing so what 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 can we do if ai can, uh, tools and generative ai can also already do a lot of things that previously was thought only possible by a human workforce so the one skill uh, which will be always required on the market is the ability to learn ability mm -hmm. to adjust uh, adapt uh, so uh, Basically, uh, the technology is uh, developing so rapidly that uh, you have to be able to, to adjust to, the, to it, to learn new things uh, and uh, ability to experiment and uh, put those, uh, those uh, new skills to work. Uh, if we are talking about the, the, our AI team, uh, then uh, of course that's the basic uh, technology knowledge, uh, as, uh, starting from uh, programming skills, then uh, prompt engineering, and so on. If we are talking about uh, all the other employees, then uh, uh, we will uh, replace some of the functions with, with the AI or uh, make them uh, more productive. And at the same time. Uh, we are looking uh, how we can requalify re those people. For example, when we had we, when we launched the, the first chatbot uh, in Latvia, uh, we requalified some of the call center agents mm -hmm. to be the chatbot uh, trainers, and we see that uh, that's that's the same uh, same scenario. We we will have uh, uh, some uh, some people who whose work uh, won't be required in the same role mm -hmm. but uh, we, we we see that our AI team most probably will uh, get uh, bigger and bigger uh, mm -hmm. and the same as it was with our IT department mm -hmm. and uh, we will require a new uh, new employees there and uh, mm -hmm. the the biggest uh, thing uh, which uh, we are looking uh, in the people is the how their character is going with DNA of our company. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we see that uh, we, we found such people, then uh, we won't let go. Mm -hmm. we, we will try to, to address that and uh, mm -hmm. teach them new skills uh, to continue mm -hmm. the journey together. If other companies want to, maybe at your scale actually, want, want to do these, all of these things that, that you have explained so far, uh, so do they also need to create their own AI departments or should they hire specialists from outside and how do you decide on, at which moment on which products because you have many products but probably you don't implement every single tool that you use yourself right and um, yes uh, so uh, if uh, there is a possibility uh, to find the out of the box product on the market, uh, we most probably will use it uh, unless it's uh, super expensive. Because uh, if you find uh, the right partner which has uh, the right uh, development vision, which uh, corresponds with your vision uh, of the future, then uh, it will be uh, more beneficial to, to buy uh, the product already off the shelf. Uh, what we will develop ourselves is our business specific applications uh, regarding the network monitoring uh, and uh, cus uh, customer uh, care uh, in, in some cases. Uh, regarding the network monitoring, we see that uh, there are some applications on the market uh, which uh, offer you the, the mm -hmm. digital twins for, for the network monitoring uh, forecast and so on. The problem is uh, that uh, they are vendor specific. For example, mm -hmm. I've uh, talked with one uh, uh, huge uh, mm -hmm. vendor on the uh, Mobile World Congress uh, mm -hmm. this year, and uh, they have a quite uh, nice use case of the G digital twins. You can see mm -hmm. all your network in real time. Sure. You can see the bottlenecks, the problems, the threats, and so on. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, you can use it uh, only if uh, the whole your network is uh, based on their products. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, that's not the case uh, for, I guess, any of the telecoms. We, we try to di diversify the, the risks 
uh, not using everything from uh, from one vendor uh, and uh, of course uh, not there isn't a single vendor which is uh, best in uh, mm -hmm. in all the application within mm -hmm. the network infrastructure and that's why uh, we see that uh, we will have to build ourselves mm -hmm. the, the this uh, digital twin concept we have a lot of data so telecoms uh, uh, is the industry which uh, has one of the largest amount of data mm -hmm. actually uh, in the world and uh, we will uh, we we are gathering this data and now it's it's time to to learn how to analyze and uh, put it uh, to work mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if uh, we are looking at uh, all other companies so what i see uh, the ai uh, might uh, increase the digital divide between the large mm -hmm. companies and the small companies because uh, for the small companies uh, basically you will be able to use general uh, purpose ai applications mm -hmm. uh, but uh, large companies are able to invest a lot of money to develop uh, applications which uh, uh, they need which uh, tackle uh, their specific needs mm -hmm. and uh, that will give them the edge in a business as well so basically if we are looking at the telecom industry then uh, the tier one uh, telecom operators like uh, orange uh, telefonica t-mobile they're working on uh, on the next level uh, use cases for for the ai they are pouring a lot of money there uh, and uh, the use cases uh, use cases are uh, really impressive do they have their own ai teams they're not partnering with uh, with the research organizations and other companies they do, uh, they do both of that. Mm -hmm. So basically, they have uh, huge AI teams uh, in house, and uh, they are partnering with uh, with the vendors and uh, with the research organizations as well. They uh, get the early access uh, to all of the developments. For example, uh, if uh, OpenAI is uh, testing something, then uh, Tier One uh, telecom operators uh, are getting the access or for Microsoft products. Mm -hmm. So they are uh, pretty huge and. Uh, vendors are interested to begin to get them on board and um, in, the, in, the, in this case you see that uh, they will have more advanced products in the future because uh, of that uh, because they are mm -hmm. able to invest they are able to allocate more people mm -hmm. to, to that purpose for for the smaller companies that that will be uh, the problem and uh, well you might be uh, the front runner in some uh, niche but basically uh, you won't be able to tackle all the field mm -hmm. and uh, that that uh, is the thing which uh, small companies uh, should address and think right now how they can uh, implement the ai and what will be the area their area of the expertise it's really interesting to, to hear how all of these pieces in this uh, huge organization works but then like uh, for the viewers right there might be a lot of entrepreneurs uh, other um, companies that that either develop new products or services or so are is that still open for collaborations you know like if you're building you have your own huge product lines you have your own um, research teams so you mentioned the large uh, companies do collaborate. So, how, what is your uh, strat strategic, uh, like uh, the uh, policy on? on uh, are you encouraging uh, like new innovative products to come to you and work together to address the market? We are fully open to to collaboration. Uh, mm -hmm. We see what's uh, what's our uh, business uh, alliance and uh, what's. Uh, what's the market we want to address and uh, if we see the potential partners within uh, this the scope then uh, we are open uh, to collaboration of course we are working on our internal products as well but uh, our uh, strategy so far which worked the best for us is that uh, we develop something uh, for ourselves so basically test uh, test it in house uh, start using uh, get all the bugs uh, within the within the company, and then we launch it on the market. So, what we see the the, the things which we have developed for, for our own needs work the best on the market as well. Uh, as as for the partners, uh, if uh, if you see that uh, you are working in uh, in the business uh, line which corresponds with uh, with the 
uh, that uh, mm -hmm. business direction, then uh, of course we can get in touch and understand how we can uh, move forward with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's great talking to you. You had like all these insights uh, from from a little bit higher up uh, from the larger corporation. You know, sometimes we talk with <laughs> with, uh, with companies that maybe have a few dozens of employees and you have like you, they don't talk about you know like uh, uh, digital transformation for a few processes so but uh, it's really nice to, to 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 understand also from other perspective these issues and uh, yeah as as uh, dimitri said that uh, you know the uh, companies that that are working on ai innovative solutions uh, can can go to that and um it's probably easier to access, especially some B2B market together. And uh, yeah, happy to talk to you uh, this time and maybe some other times. So nice, nice that you agreed to meet me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining another episode of AI Ranch. And uh, as a gratitude for our work, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And see you in the next episode. Thank you.